Joe Partington, defender. Ross Litney, goalkeeper. Michael Green, left back. Ben Shrevens, I think I was standing out on the right side of midfield from what I remember. Um, so the feeling bef before the game, we talk about it actually, me and, uh, um, me and the manager quite a lot, that before that game we actually turned up to the, to the change room late. Probably had the, one of the quickest warm-ups we've ever had. I think we probably warmed up about quarter past half past two from what I remember. So that was more the build-up to it, though. probably the worst preparation we could have had. We got there about 20 to 23, I think, and it was just a mad rush and everyone just went out when they were ready, basically, in drips and drabs. We didn't have much of a warm-up before, before the game. It was actually, you, the lads got changed and sort of got out when they could, so some of the lads needed, obviously, needed a bit longer to get ready than others. I think I just did like a real condensed kind of warm-up, just what I needed and then have a cup of coffee and relax again. You know, that stress, you don't want to stress yourself out. I can imagine if, if crew were thinking that they were playing a non-league team, that um, it's sort of, we, we looked non-league, we, we turned up, we, you know, we all came out to warm up at different times. But at the same time, didn't give you any nerves or anything like that. You quickly warmed up, got your stuff on, got ready to play the game. Crew have been knocked out of the cup in the first round in five of the last six seasons, but against fifth tier Eastleigh at Gresty Road, they were given a real opportunity to progress. But this was a tie that the non-league side dominated. Yemi Udabade had the first real chance for the visitors. The Nigerian's effort cleared off the line by Ben Nugent. Chris Todd's side entered this fixture unbeaten in five games and were playing with plenty of confidence. Udabade and James Constable combined brilliantly to set the former through on goal. His effort was saved by Ben Garrett before Ben Strevens blazed the follow-up over. Good job you made up for that in the end, wasn't it, the manager? Rolling back the years, putting the ball over. Well, he was under a bit of pressure, but he probably said he should have done better, yeah. I think Yemi should have scored, they shouldn't even have come back to me. No, Yemi uh, done great, to be fair. The keeper saved it, rolled it back to me. I think I tried whipping it in the far, uh, sorry, the near post. And as you can see, it went terribly wrong. It just blazed it over the bar. <laughs> we were good that day, actually. I'm not sure, obviously, when crew were probably at a different stage themselves at the time they were you know I think they're um, they're doing very well this year they, you know they've got a good young squad um, but at the time for whatever reason they you know they were they were finding it difficult um, so you know we had um, we had a, a you know a small confidence that we might be able to cause them some some problems and um, and we did a little bit actually and obviously it gave everyone confidence and I think from the start everyone thought we had a chance of uh, going through. The fact that I've not been in a highlight is always a good sign, which means uh, we've ever been great or they've been poor. We created some good chances and, um, and on, on another day could have, you know, could have taken a few more, to be honest. Crew were then reduced to 10 men just after the hour mark when Garrett raced outside of his penalty area and upended Udabade. A straight red issued by referee Carl Poisson. It's Jay round the referee, that used to happen all the time. Jay Reason getting in the ref's ear. When you watch this replay of him telling the referee, first of all, this inside the box, and then second of all, the keeper should, should, should get sent off. Um, I know, like, I'm, I'm obviously really good friends with Jay and I like him a lot, but he is one of the most annoying people to play against. He, you know, he probably manipulated the referee there in our favour, and, um, and having the, you know, the goalkeeper being sent off obviously worked in our favour quite a lot. Well, it doesn't really matter if it's a keeper or another player. Um, it does give you an advantage in numbers, obviously, but I'm sure you know it. Sometimes playing against ten men can actually be harder. Because they was at home, they was having some chance and stuff like that. But as soon as it went to ten men, I felt like you know that certainly put them on the back foot a little bit, and we we believed we could go on and win from there. We had a sort of a real um, underlying ability of self-belief in us, um, which is something we, we've still got as a, as a club. We managed to, you know, to have a little bit more of the ball off, off the back of that. Off the, the, you know, they had a man sent off and um, ended up going on to, to create some more chances. And it got even worse for Crew when Eastleigh were awarded a penalty. Substitute keeper Dan Nizic making his debut for the Railwaymen, tripping Ross Lafayette inside the box. Um, I just tried to my hardest to wait as long as I could to try and see which way he was going to go because I felt he was going to dive because um, like I'm saying I felt like he was going to go one way or the other to try and wait and um, luckily he did and I put it the other side. He was a banker to, to score a pen to be honest. 
He was a penalty taker at the time and he'd scored a couple of good ones here actually under pressure. Earlier in that season we had um, we'd beat Lincoln at home 4-0 and we missed three penalties in one game. Um, who was it that missed I think? Jack Midson missed, uh, Brian Howard missed and Will Evans missed so it was um, after that I was more or less like I'm going to take him because everyone had had a chance so it was just luckily for me I think I don't know if I took one before then or not but I know I'd been successful with a few pennies so it was just yeah and there was no question that I was the penny taker and if we got one I was going to pick it up and go for it. No, I was definitely confident. Like I said I've played with Strevs in sort of four different clubs now uh, over the last sort of 15 15 years so I, I know how good he was as a player um, so yeah total, total confidence. Streven stepped up and made no mistake from 12 yards, his fourth of the season, to give Eastley the advantage 15 minutes from time. <laughs> he does look a bit younger here really, though, I've got to say. <laughs> it was really good actually, yeah. Yeah, it was, we had a real good, um, a really good crowd there that day, you know, good away following. I remember someone run on the pitch and then um, it was weird because you have all that commotion going on in motion all that sort of stuff but you see actually faces that you knew in the crowd and stuff um, so yeah it was good all, all of us went over and celebrated together as well some real good pictures to look back on and stuff like that and it's always a strain when you're at the other end you can't it's, it's, it's a long way to run and join in um, so you kind of have your own mini celebration it might be a fist pump a little jump or if, you, if you're around your fans you can get in amongst them but yeah no it's great listen to take a, a 1-0 lead away at crew was, was brilliant with their numerical advantage, Eastley enjoyed the majority of the possession in the final quarter of an hour and nearly scored again when Udabadi was delightfully teed up by Andy Drury. And Eastley went even closer after some terrific play from Lafayette and Jay Reason, the former Ipswich junior denied at the near post by Nizic. One goal, though, was enough to trigger wild celebrations from the visiting supports. Eastley threw in one of the shocks of the round. I must have been there somewhere, but it's, it's just nice that you watch it back. I know there's any highlights, but I remember thinking at the time that um, we probably should have won by more than we did. But uh, watching that back there, I think we had about three or four chances where we normally would have took them. So um, I get a little bit of the thing because I took the penalty, but being completely honest, there's a few other boys that could have scored. And, and they, I remember Yemi having a real good game that day. Jukes was class, you know, he was a brilliant player for us. Yeah, obviously, like I said, you can just tell what it meant to the fans, everyone was buzzing, so yeah, it was, it was a really good day. But the FA Cup is, you know, it's, it's massive for, for teams like us, our level, given the opportunity to test ourselves against league, you know, league players and, uh, and you know, that was, a, that was obviously a good day. We've had some good days in the FA Cup at this club and, and that was certainly one of them. An FA Cup is a special competition and uh, however many rounds you're lucky enough to get through, um, you enjoy every one. Um, as if it's going to be your last, really. You soon realise after, now we look back on it, it was the first time we had beaten a league club, um, you know, one of the furthest I think we've ever got in the competition. And then in the coming years, it just, you know, become not the norm, but then we did it, you know, when I had left here, but then the boys went and beat Swindon and places like that. But it's always um, it's always good to do a first, you know, to, to get as far as the club got in it and to beat the league opposition. It was something that probably, hopefully, will always be looked back on and remembered. Hopefully, on you know this this Saturday coming, we can we can get a positive result, and uh, and some of the guys who maybe haven't experienced that, that some of the young lads who who are, who are play, playing particularly well at the moment might um, might get themselves some you know some some positive feedback off the back of that, and you know it'd be good for the for the football club to have another run. They were at home, so I think it could be even better scoreline. Hopefully, yeah, I'll be there giving everything I can to the to the to the squad and the team, and um, like I say, hoping to get the right result. So it's going to be different for me. I'll be standing there, you know, if we could get the victory, I'm sure Toddy looks back at it really proud as one of the best victories he had as a manager. And um, it will certainly rank up there um, with me. You know, I've only been a manager for a year, but it'll certainly be up there with one of the best feelings I have if we manage to be a league club. I certainly hope it's a good day for the boys and more memories to be had. And then ultimately it's to try and get to the third round in the FA Cup and try and get an amazing, amazing game for them to look forward to again. And one that, um, you know, I never experienced playing a Premier League team in the FA Cup. I think that's that's the dream of every every young lad. If you don't make it into the Premier League, is to do well in the FA Cup to play a, a massive ground against a Premier League side. So that's what the uh, the goal is in front of the boys.